Together with our loved ones, that's always life's best and most memorable moments. As China embraces the year of the rabbit, let's share these good times with friends amid music, <laughs> laughter, and food. Together, again, the Spring Festival special of World Insight. Hello and welcome to Together Again. Spring Festival special, a world insight with me, Tianwei. Here in the streets of Beijing, I think of the good old times with longtime friends in these hutongs over the years. Today, I will catch up with a group of English comedians who studied crosstalk under the same master in China for years. The comedy mentorship has forged strong bonds with China, the people here and with each other. Now in different parts of the world, comedy remains the common durable threat, bringing them together. So let's welcome the year of the rabbit with the mirth and warmth from the power of humor. David, Julian, Jesse, what a pleasure to see all of you all at once. It's, uh, it's great to see each other, actually. <laughs> we <have> yes. <laughs> it is the Spring Festival, the most important festival of the year for the Chinese. Anything to say to our audience, David? Yeah, I wish you a happy new year. Happier new year than the old year. Let's put it that way. As long as the new year is happier than the old year, I'm fine. Well, we have to wish, right? It's the, the end of an era, <laughs> of a three-year period. So... We have to wish that everybody, I know it wasn't, uh, the, the, there were many things uh, happening and in a lot of families too. So I just um, wish that everybody gets better. Everybody gets a, a great life, has more time with the, uh, with the family and also to have um, mm -hmm. everything going well with work because there's going to be a lot of change. So it's actually, it's a worldwide phenomenon. We all had different problems mm. these few years. Yeah. We hope that it's the end of the pandemic. Okay, the end of the pandemic. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. Jesse. I uh, just want to wish everybody a happy year of the rabbit. And hopefully in the year of the rabbit, you'll be able to jump over all the bad stuff that would have happened if it was a regular animal. So think about that. Mm. Whoa. All right. That sounds great. What are the things or what is the thing you are most proud of for the year 2022? Uh, Julian? What I'm... <laughs> I don't know if I'm proud of anything for 2022, but I'll say, no, I'll say one thing. Uh, it's a big change in my life. It was accelerated by the pandemic. So I had to make a choice. Actually, my kids, uh, my wife and kids had been living in France for a few years. So I was traveling back and forth and obviously it was not possible with the pandemic. So I had to choose and I was stuck in France for a while and I came back and then uh, seven months and a half in China without seeing my kids. It was just too much. So I made a huge mm. decision to come to go back to France. Um, I, first of all, I miss them, but I, I, I think they need me a lot also at that stage because my, my daughter was 11, my son was nine. So I decided to go back to France, but for good, just to uh, something I've never done. I, I've lived in China since I was 20 years old. So over 20 mm. years, because even though I look 25, I'm actually over 40 year old. And um, who, who told you that you look 25? You should really. <laughs> yeah, this is not a friend. Yeah. So that's the thing you're proud of. David, what about for you? Uh, well, um, you know, I've been for the past many years teaching American students about Chinese culture. But uh, this year I had the, the pleasure and the opportunity to teach a group of Chinese students who were headed towards the U.S. to begin their grad, their undergraduate careers there. And my job was to do some preliminary classes on behalf of some American universities to, to, to sort of get them up to date with American culture. And I discovered that actually these young Chinese kids actually knew much more about American culture than I do. Uh, I mean, I'm very old, actually. Well, is that, something, most, is that something new in that statement? Uh, it's just a, the, mm. name, the cold, hard truth. Uh, I'm old, and uh, they actually know much more about my culture than I do. But 
in discussing with them, I found out that I actually know a lot more about their culture than they do. <laughs> That's precisely it. Culture is a very complicated thing. And we tend to think, uh, you know, we're from a culture and we know all there is to know about it. But in fact, they could teach me a lot and I could teach them a lot. So it was kind of nice. It was kind of cool. Um, I'm proud. This was really the first full year I lived as an American in America as an adult. Uh, like, you know, this was a big year as well. I moved to Los Angeles um, because I was in China immediately after college and then all the way through the pandemic. This was the first year in which I was like, you know, I moved to a new city. I rented my first apartment ever as an American. I, uh, you know, bought my first furniture ever as an American. I, um, oh. I really gave a, a shot at being an American. I don't think I did very well because I still mostly hang out with Chinese people. But um, <laughs> I definitely tried. Um, and, uh, you know, it was it was a good experience to try to, you know, fit in and see who the hell I was in this country. Oh, can I say that? Yeah. So it was, you know what you it say, was, Jesse? It's funny because I actually mostly hang out with Chinese people in France, too, in Paris. There we go. And you know, so that makes me but feel you know the reason better. why? You know the reason mm. why? Because why? I, I've been... You know, we, we've, we've gone through that. We've been always kind of the focus of attention and being interviewed all the time. And, and I actually don't want to be interviewed in France by French people asking constant questions about China, about how was life in China? How did you mm. like it? How did you make it? How did you study no. Chinese? How was mm. it? All those endless questions. And Chinese people here, they know me, they know who I am, so I can have normal discussions. So yeah. That's <laughs> they're funny. like, oh, you must have so many French friends. And I said, no, you have more French friends than I have. I don't know. Over the past few years, all of us seem to be in a very different mode. And our moods are, uh, shall we say, evolving all the time with the changes of things in the world, in our lives. Um, I don't know how. What has that taught you? I'm still right now in the process of digesting. Maybe you are already reaching some conclusions. One thing I learned is I took a lot more from China than I thought I did because physically I left all my possessions behind. Like physically I took nothing from my almost 10 years in China, but then kind of as a personality and as like skills, I took a lot more than I expected. And uh, my, like I was, uh, uh, like tea was something that I just did for fun in China and it was never anything I intended to be a big thing. And now coming back to America, I realized I took all this tea knowledge with me that in America is really hard to find. Um, and mm -hmm. so it was, uh, it was one of those things where I realized that like what I thought I was doing with my time in China well, maybe I was actually doing even more than that and I didn't realize it. And that helps feel better considering that I did lose all of my stuff. <laughs> How is your digesting process, David? Um, I think for me, uh, it was a matter of sort of rethinking uh, what time itself. Like usually uh, for the last 30 years I've been here in China, I always kind of knew what my year was going to look like. It was sort of structured around the semesters, the school, the, the, the summer vacations, the winter vacations. And so there was a, a sort of set, a set time for family, a set time for this and that. So what that, what that meant was that, for example, with when my family, it's, it's not like, uh, oh, well, uh, this would be great to catch up with my brother and sister over at Christmas when we're together and we'll talk about this and we'll have this, uh, you know, I, we can catch up on Christmas. And suddenly there was no Christmas and suddenly there was no catch up. I mean, there was ketchup, but that was <laughs> there was no catching up. And yeah. so what happened, what, what, what some interesting things happened was, which was that um, we began to realize, you know, we don't need to wait until a certain time to, to do a certain thing. I mean, we can actually catch up now. And uh, mm -hmm. what happened, this, this kind of revolutionized my family life because instead of waiting for the summer vacation or for the time when, I, when we could, they could come here, or I could go there. Suddenly it was like, if something's happened, let's get on the phone, let's get on the WeChat, on the Zoom or whatever, and let's just have, let's talk, let's let's communicate. So ironically, during the last two years, at least of this epidemic, I have spent more time talking with my family. I think to, to me, um, I wouldn't say I realized something new or something, but I was kind of forced since I, I made a very blunt decision 
to to really i was as i was saying learn how to survive in france that actually having to spend a lot of time thinking what do i want to do am i going to find a job mm. that that's the story of my life even when i was in china same because i grew up being a cellist what we would do was rehearsing and concert rehearsal concert so uh, in china i spent a few years doing different jobs and then finding finally that i can do that on tv and also do rehearsal and uh, and, and and tv show or you know uh whatever event so mm. the what i've been doing being a tv host uh, has been perfect for me but suddenly mm. back in france i was in a different place and i had to uh analyze all that but the the, the good thing also that I, I did realize in a way is, for example, for, for my kids' musical education, because they are both study an, an instrument. And when actually we decided back in the day, when I was traveling back and forth every month, but my wife and kids moved to France, part of the reason why, uh, part of the reason was that I wanted them to have uh, better musical, classical music uh, education. I realized last year coming back that it's really different when I'm here and I can help even if they have a great structure. Mm. Jesse, I remember three years ago, uh, at the early stage of the pandemic, you were, just like your colleagues here, uh, were trying to do a lot of things for China. And, you know, not only China, but those people that are suffering from the pandemic at the very beginning. And you had some uh, fundraising, uh, uh, performances. I remember I was talking to you about that. You are making fun of the pandemic, making fun of how people have been trying to deal with the pandemic, always with a grain of humor. I really like that. But, you know, three years since then, um, there's so much heavy things on our heart. And therefore, how would you come up with that grain of humor when actually it's really heavy to be honest it's been harder i think to make people laugh the this year than it was in really kind of the scariest time of the pandemic because when it was like comedy i think works well with the unknown like if you don't know what the world's going to be like like you can have all sorts of funny like what if it's like this what if it's like that you can have humor in that but by year three, I think everybody was like, okay, we know what this is. It's also been a good opportunity, I think, to do the, the Chinese cultural exchange in America because, um, you know, a lot of the, this year I made a lot of these tea videos and it's, um, it was yeah. surprising me. It was like one of the only places where you could talk, like talk Chinese culture and the comment section just didn't turn into an argument. You know, I think that uh, one of the role, you know, part of the role of, of humor is not just to uh, try to take your mind off of or make you feel better. It's actually the way we actually understand and talk to each other and, and understand what's happening collectively. Because when jokes resonate, it means that there's some deep kind of issue there, or attention there that everyone's feeling, but no one has quite ever expressed. And that's mm -hmm. the, the genius of stand-up comedy, the genius of humor is that you find a joke or something that actually expressed something that everyone was already feeling, but no one had ever expressed it yeah. in words before. And mm -hmm. with COVID, this happened every day, uh, uh, practically. Well, this is the funny thing is like, I feel like as a, as a uh, professional, I'd like to write every single joke myself. Um, but the internet has shown that recycling other people's better content is a far better way of making a living than making anything yourself. One thing I will say that has been funny is like now being back in the Western internet, there's like a huge amount of pirated material that I know comes from Douyin or Kuaisho or these places because I, I also am on Douyin and Kuaisho and all these other sites. And so um, like part of me is like, does nobody care that this was stolen from the Chinese internet? And I'm like, ah, oh, this is just the, the beginning of the, of the flip of all those years of having the Western content to show up oh. somehow on, on, on Douyin or, 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 uh, or Shipping Hall. It's like the worst. It's like all Western that's content. What, that's, something I, that's something I wanted to mention because I did see some, some jokes that, that I wondered what the direction was. There was one joke I saw that said, uh, during lockdown, I gained so much weight that the buttons on my shirt began to socially distance themselves. <laughs> That's good. And, and, and so I saw that, I saw that actually on the Chinese internet. And then uh, I found it somewhere in English and I went, wait a minute. I said, did, did, did they actually steal that from China or did the Chinese steal it from us? My, my 
my sort of solution to, or my sort of resolution to the problem is I think jokes like that are going to just happen naturally on both sides of on all yeah. of the yeah. world. And it, it's simultaneous a, a simultaneous trans tra uh, creation, right? Yeah. So uh, that was that's even more encouraging because you know everyone's feeling the same thing all over the world. Just, yeah. just mm. translated in the language, it translates perfectly. Yeah. I want to congratulate our Chinese friends with the celebration of the Chinese New Year and wish uh, all the people of China peace, prosperity, success. We in Azerbaijan are your friends and good partners. We enjoy a very good relationship for many, many years and we really love your country and we're very glad that more and more Azerbaijanis visit China and more people uh, of China visit Azerbaijan, so people-to-people -people contacts are very important uh, in order to establish closer political relations. I'm sure that China will continue to succeed in its, in its economic development, in social development, and the uh, middle corridor which uh, unites us will successfully be implemented. Happy New Year! Hello, my name is Rodrigo Chavez. I am the President of the Republic of Costa Rica in Central America. I'm taking this opportunity to wish everybody a very happy Chinese New Year. I hope the year of the rabbit is going to be a great year for everybody in the world and in China. Thank you. My name is Ngozi Okonjiwala. I'm the Director General of the World Trade Organization. And I want to wish China and all Chinese people a very happy New Year of the Rabbit. Good luck. I am Rebecca Greenspan, the Secretary General of the UN Conference on Trade and Development. Xin Yen Huaila. Julian, so what about that? Dealing with this so-called cultural shock, while at the same time dealing with the layer of the pandemic and the uncertainties and also the excitement of being reunited with your family in a way um, and rediscovering the place where you originally coming from you know how would you use that uh, the grain of uh, uh, humor in order to deal with these layers of complexity and interesting feelings uh, twisted mm. all combined Humor, to me, there's one thing that is uh, everywhere I take it with me, and, and I'm teaching that to my son also, um, is, is uh, to, my, to both my kids, actually, uh, is the sense of self-deprecation, which is mm. something we learn, we've learned with Xiangshan, we learn with comedy, any type of comedy. When you're on stage, you make a fool of yourself. You need to know that you're a fool, and it's okay, and you need to accept that everybody is going to make fun of you. So even if you're in a new environment, you, you, you don't understand it, that was the thing for me, even trying to work a little bit in France and, and feeling really like an idiot because I didn't know how people worked. I didn't know how to act certain things, which felt very natural for people here. Mm. Or I didn't even know how to, uh, how to sur survive with all those, all that paperwork uh, in France with the, you know, the, the taxes and all that. And, and I'm sure oh, it's okay. a lot, it's very similar for Americans who go back, I'm guessing. And a lot of that, and also how to work with French people. So think about that. And think, okay, no, mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't be that nervous. I shouldn't be that nervous that people, you know, that, that people see that side of me that, that doesn't understand anything. And they're very surprised. And I just say, oh, you know, I lived outside of France for, for 20 years. I was actually in China. So everything's mm -hmm. so different. Oh, okay, I understand. Yeah. And um, I, I'm making fun of That's myself. It. Yeah, it's a real works. struggle. I had the, the very similar situations in America. I rented my first apartment in America and I showed up on the first day to give the check to pay rent. And the guy at the front desk was like, oh, we can't take the money. I'm like, why, why can't you take the money? And he's like, well, everybody who moves into this building, we do a background check on them. And we did a background check on you and we didn't find anything. <laughs> and I'm like, uh... I don't know what to tell you, man. I was I was in Beijing, and they're like, you know, you never and had a credit card before. 
before you were 30? I'm like, nah, I, I used Drupal Ball. Like I like, you know, like didn't need a credit card. This is maybe a good time to talk about, um, you know, uh, what we're going, where are we going to do and do with ourselves now that we can, now that the opportunity is coming up that to freely pass back and forth between these borders. Oh, mm. if I, mean, I that's hope. The, that, that's the, the new thing coming up. And I almost don't know what to think. I'm so used to yeah. restrictions and everything. And I'm thinking, gee, what do I want to do? And, and I'm thinking, I'm kind of facing the same thing. Well, of course, I want to go back to the U.S. because uh, I haven't been there in four years, three and three and a half years. Uh, but then what am I going to do there? Who am I going to see? Where am I going to go first? Mm. Am I able? Don't worry. When you'll see the, the, the plane exactly. ticket prices, you won't want to fly that much. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But I mean, I mean one, one issue is like, hmm, is it dangerous? <laughs> Maybe they have some, oh, some, some COVID versions that I haven't uh, absorbed yet. Uh, and so, oh, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, all these things, it's like, what do we go forward with freedom comes choices and i'm not used to all the choices i've kind of been used to living in a world where i had no choice and that was that's kind of liberating in a certain way but now i've got to if i go back to the us i guess at the very least uh, i'll probably uh you know uh listen to a little jazz on the radio instead of playing it here in beijing but yeah like you know in, in the last like 3 years i think i've tried to trained myself creatively as a comedian to be like what can you do when you're trapped in your room and there's exactly. no open mics and there's no uh chance of performing live in china and you can't do any tv shows and you can't do this and you can't do that so plan a b c d e f g h i have all been canceled and i've gotten pretty good at plan j um and now it's like looking back at the open world i'm like plan j is a pretty bad plan if you can just go back and forth it's not actually exactly. a good plan. Exactly. Um, and, and so I'm, I think uh, the hard thing for me is just recognizing that my heart wants my old life back and my brain knows I'm never getting my old life back. No, um, no. So what I need to figure out is like, where does China fit in whatever new life I want mm -hmm. to build? And that is scary because it's yeah. so big and confusing that, um, that I don't know exactly what to do with it. But on the other hand, it's almost exciting because when the pandemic hit i was going to move back to china but now i've been away so mm -hmm. long if i move to china i am moving to china i'm not moving back it's probably going to be after a few years from china a re an opportunity to rediscover of course the results of the rediscovery is still unknown but that is something unusual i think uh, was, I mean, given your experiences in the past decades, huh, in a way. The way I used to live was not even necessarily the best way to live in China. Maybe there was a better way and I was just so stuck in my routines that I didn't recognize it. So yeah. my, my hope is that when I go back, I'll be able to, you know, because I mean, I've changed as a person over the last three years. And some of that has been for the better, even though some of it has not. Finally, before we go, share with us your spring festival well uh for, for me uh you know i've my relatives my my wife is chinese and her relatives are in hubei and uh we have missed the last what three four spring festivals i mean i haven't been able to go there and, and uh, my wife has not been able to come back uh but what but we're talking about it now in fact we just did yesterday by on wechat and what strikes me, at least with them, and I don't know what uh, this, whether anyone else is this way, but their attitude was definitely not one of, oh, we've got to make up for all the missed opportunities and all the missed spring festivals, and we have to make this one a really big blowout, and, and we're going to really pull out all the stops. You know, quite the contrary. In fact, their attitude was, you know, oh, we've been through so much. Let's just not worry about all that stuff. Let's not make a lot of plans. Let's not go to see everyone. Let's just get together in the same room, be together and talk and, and get acquainted again. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very sane and very nice. You know, they're not they're not saying, you know, let's now jump in and, and make make up for lost time. It's in a, in a way that the fact that we miss so many means that we realize that the real point of it is not the spring festival itself mm -hmm. and not the exterior traffic. <laughs> but it's the meaning of family and togetherness. And I think they just want to appreciate that. Interestingly enough, we we have a new way of showing the Chinese New Year here because 
You remember when I was saying I wanted to show more of France when I was living in China for all those years? Well, suddenly now I'm in, I'm, a, I'm a, in the reverse situation where let's make a bit of China here in France. And there are many Chinese uh, communities here. You know, it's like the, the US, Europe, you have tons of Chinese communities, Chinese associations of all different professions, but also in the north of France, there's an interesting phenomenon. Contrary to Paris, where there are tons of different Chinese people's associations, in the whole north of France, which is actually, it's uh, four provinces. Mm. Uh, it's a big, big, big region. And there's one big Chinese people's association. Not, it's not about professions, or it's just the Chinese community. And it's very, very big. And I've been quite close to them. They're very happy to have me. Um, so, so we're kind of putting the whole north part of France a little bit more on the map, especially among the Chinese from the whole France, you know. So it's, we're, we're making a big uh, Truman event, but it's actually, my wife came up with that idea and, and, and I thought it was wonderful. We're, we're doing a Miao Hui. Yeah. We're doing wow. a, a big Chinese a style temple fair. Way. Yeah, a temple fair. And we're going to yeah. have some Chinese food. We're going to have some Chinese alcohol. We're going to have some uh, Chinese language shows, some uh, calligraphy, some even Tai Chi Chuan, you know. <laughs> we're going mm -hmm. to have a, 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 big, uh, a big event around that. So we're quite excited. It's maybe not much when you are in China, but when you're outside of it and trying to show that. Uh, and you see that actually French people are, are getting really excited also, very curious yeah. about it. it it's, and, and it warms our hearts and it warms the hearts of a lot of other Chinese people. That, oh, wow, we haven't had much of that here actually all of those years because they, they make a lot of big banquets and everybody gatherings just for a big dinner or a big reception. But this is something different and it's outside. Mm. More inclusive, certainly. Mm. Uh, Jesse. The, the spring festival is actually an official holiday in California and still like kids have school off, everything like that. There are so many Chinese and Asian uh, people of Asian descent in California. Um, uh, but of course, having graduated, I have every day off. Um, and uh, in uh, last year, what we did with a bunch of my friends is we had a bunch of these uh, people who had been um, uh, uh, like what we call repats. So sort of people who had been Americans in China and now live in California, many of which are married to Chinese people now. And so last year we had a barbecue. We had char, uh, like old, like, you know, Lao Beijing style char with lots of uh, cumin and spicy, uh, spicy peppers. And, um, uh, you know, played ping pong outside and sometimes somebody's got a pool. So it's, um, it's definitely... I don't know how traditional Chinese it is, but you, it's full of <laughs> half of the people are Chinese, half of the people are Americans who lived in China and speak Chinese and everybody's talking Chinese mm -hmm. and eating char and hang out by the pool. So um, that's what we did last year. And um, you need to wait for somebody with the pool to invite you though, that's the key. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us your personal stories. Uh, I really appreciate that. And you know, after all these talks, I'm looking forward even more to your coming back to China and reunited with many that you love. Happy Spring Festival to you and your loved ones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Happy you. Spring Festival to you too.